So let's start converting my blog by first moving to use the new Bootstrap 3 CSS and JavaScript and other files. Here is the website we're actually going to replace. This is just a simple index.html version of the home page of my blog on a particular day. We're going to use this as sort of an example of how to convert it. We're just converting the raw HTML in this case, along with the inclusions like the CSS, the fonts, the images, etc. So we can see what the flow is. When I do the real conversion of my blog, I would also need to make those changes on some server-side technology like ASP.NET or PHP or whatever I'm using for my blog, even WordPress. So what we learn here in this conversion should be pretty straightforward. Here in the index.html file is the content that displays this simple page that we're going to convert. And we can see over here that we've got CSS, image, and JavaScript directories that include our bootstrap files. There's bootstrap responsive and bootstrap CSS from bootstrap 2. There's the JavaScript files and as well image files for the glyph icons in bootstrap 2. In particular, this image folder goes away in Bootstrap 3. Now don't just delete your image folder. You may have other images, but the glyph icons, halflings white and regular halflings, should be deleted. They're not used in Bootstrap 3 at all. In fact, instead, it's going to use a glyph icons font so that those icons can be sized based on the different needs. I also have some other CSS in here that's important. These three style CSS files are actually from the template that I used to build my website. So we're going to have to make some changes not only in our index.html, but to some of these other CSS files as well. If we go ahead and look at the zip file for Bootstrap, like we did earlier in the course, I'm just going to grab the three folders that are inside of the dist folder inside of the Bootstrap 3. These are the three folders that contain the CSS, the JavaScript, and the fonts for the icons. And I'm just going to paste them in our folder and tell it to go ahead and replace any files it needs to. If we now look back in our editor, we can see that under this new fonts folder, there are font files for the glyph icons. And so we can actually go ahead and delete our image folder. That's no longer necessary. We can also delete the responsive bootstrap files because they are for the older version of bootstrap that I was using. There is no equivalency to this file because bootstrap is responsive by default. What bootstrap 3 has brought in is bootstrap JS, bootstrap CSS, and bootstrap theme CSS, and of course the minimized versions of each of those. And we're going to use them. In fact, if we go over to our index.html, we can see that we already have reference to the Bootstrap CSS, and at the bottom will be a reference to Bootstrap Min as well. So we've already included Bootstrap 3 because we've overwritten the older versions of our Bootstrap. We'll also want to actually get rid of this Bootstrap responsive link. I'll just comment it out so that you guys can see where it used to be, because we no longer need that. That file doesn't exist anymore. You may notice we're not bringing in Bootstrap theme. And that's because Bootstrap theme is a standard default theme for Bootstrap that is included in the Bootstrap 3 distribution. And because we're basing our website on an existing theme we use, we don't actually need these. We're not going to actually use the default theme, and you might even delete those as your project progresses. Now that we've made these changes, let's go to the browser. So this is what the website used to look like. I haven't refreshed it yet. If I go ahead and refresh it with our new changes from Bootstrap, we're going to see that a lot is broken. Our nav bars at the top are gone. Our pagers are now just simple unordered lists. Same with our items above each blog entry. Our sidebar is missing because it's probably here at the bottom. Yep, sidebar. And we're getting some other visual things like our three sections in our footer are now simply stacked instead of left to right. So for the most part, this whole grid system, as well as a lot of the components I'm using from Bootstrap 2, don't work out of the box. You're going to need to make major changes to change class names, to reintroduce the grid, those sorts of things to do our conversion. And where we'll head next is migrating the old grid settings to the new grid settings.